Hello and welcome to The Path, the podcast from Lifestyler X. My name is Dan and welcome back to the show. In today's episode, Brendan interviews a Lifestyler X patient, uh, Susan Gratton, uh, who has effectively became known to uh, the Lifestyler X team as the lady at the pool. We noticed um, a quick backstory on her uh, uh, nickname, I guess. We noticed a few interview uh, patients coming in and when we asked them how they heard about us, they said the lady at the pool. And we saw this a couple of times and we eventually discovered that it was Susan. She was referring people at her uh, local community pool to the program. So we thought that was kind of cool. And um, so this it's an interview with her about uh, her experiences in the program and uh, Lifestyle Rex in general, which uh, I hope you enjoy. So enjoy the interview between Brendan and Susan. All right. I'm super excited today. We have the lady at the pool. Susan, tell us about the lady at the pool. Well, um, I couldn't stop talking about uh, Lifestyle RX, and uh, I use every opportunity to tell people what an amazing program um, it is and how it's been a life changer for me. Yeah, and it, it was funny because um, we we keep track of where our leads come from, you know, whether it's from a doctor or from family or from friends. And on our on our reports, there was this category lady at the pool. And, and, and there were a lot of people who that's what they identified. Yeah, you know, where do they come from? The lady at the pool. So thank you, Susan, for 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 sharing the uh, the program with others. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about your journey and uh, kind of how you came to us and, and kind of how your journey went. All right. Thank you. Well, um, I am not sure if I'm sort of a typical person who is diagnosed with uh, type 2 um, diabetes, but um, I don't even know when that came about. So how I came to the program was um, a couple of years ago, I was at Whistler for a conference. We had a heat wave and uh, I was staying in a nice place, but it wasn't air conditioned, it had fans. But so I started spending um, more time in the outdoor pool and there was a, a, a young, a young, um, a, a child there uh, whose name was Gabrielle and Gabrielle and I were hanging out in the pool. Uh, his mom had brought him up to Whistler. I think he was about 11 or 12 and he was a soccer player and basketball player and um, so we just started playing and I remembered that when I was younger, I had really liked swimming. Wasn't a, I certainly wasn't an athletic swimmer as a recreational swimmer, but I'd forgotten the joy of uh, movement in the water. So when I came back from Whistler, I was cruising the internet and with no particular idea in mind. And I came across something that said lifestyle. And I thought, oh, that sounds really interesting because I was looking for a change and it was somewhat related to movement. So I Googled, Googled it, got someplace in California. I thought, okay, well, that's cool. And then below it was the wellness garage and Dr. Byrne. And uh, so read a little bit about it. I think there was a link. And then I ended up phoning Jack, talking to Jack. And uh, I kept on saying to him, are you sure this is free? <laughs> this sounds too great to be covered by our MSP program. So um, I never really identified as being diabetic. Um, I was, I don't know. I don't even remember when somebody said, okay, you're pre-diabetic and now you're diabetic. And I never really defined myself as being diabetic. And I was a terrible patient uh, in the sense that wasn't really interested, even if I was getting information, good information, wasn't really interested in it because I didn't feel like I was coping with uh, um, any kind of condition. The way I actually saw it when Jack said this, you know, yes, it's covered by our MSP. And if you have a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, you'd be eligible to be in the program. Uh, I saw it as a real gift. Um, I have a friend um, and I reminded her over the weekend when I was talking about 
this interview that one time um, I had said to her, I don't feel like a diabetic. Like it doesn't really seem to impact my life. Um, except of course, I was in denial, I suppose. I mean, I was in denial about what the, you know, the potential um, health risks in the future, but that was in the future, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I never really had the opportunity where I live. Um, we have a shortage of um, family doctors. And so my family doctor left and um, he was really, uh, I, he uh, sent me to another, actually, I th no, that's not right. So I was at the clinic for some, because when I was diagnosed with um, type two, I was put on metformin and did actually know what it did, didn't know what it was for. My main health concern, if there was a health concern was high blood pressure. And I had actually lost some time from work because I'm in a fairly stressful job, very stressful job. <laughs> and uh, I had uh, just, uh, my body had basically stopped functioning and my blood pressure had gone really, really high. So during the course of dealing with that, I had run into a fabulous um, doctor who, uh, I remember him saying to me uh, a little bit of an aside, he said, do you think you're depressed? I said, how would I have time to know if I'm depressed? And he sort of laughed. So we talked about meditation that I was into. And then when he left, I was sort of afloat. I mean, I think at that point I had been diagnosed, but I was afloat in terms of not knowing anything really about how do I do this? How do I address type two diabetes uh, apart from taking this medicine, which God knows what it does, right? But I didn't have any side effects. And, and so I just kept on um, taking it. So it was really type two diabetes has in a way been a blessing for me uh, because it allowed me to qualify for the program, which uh, I could not stop talking about at the pool <laughs> and other places. I went to get my hair cut today and I told my uh, the lady, the stylist all about the program and said, because everyone knows someone who has diabetes. Right, right, and right. Um, so I don't think I talked about it at Sephora where I went to buy makeup, but anyway, I missed <laughs> the opportunity. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that's how it started. Um, I was a little skeptical at first when, um, as I got into the process, um, not, although I'm a paperwork based professional, I wasn't really, and I like doing introspection, but so the paperwork at first, especially getting measured, Dr. Bird, <laughs> ah, I mean, I, I was know. okay. I was okay with the height, but I wasn't too crazy about the measurements and I didn't even at that point own a scale. So, yeah. and I remember when you interviewed me, I said to you, um, I, I'm fairly comfortable with my weight. And apparently that turned out not to be so accurate because I really loved as I got into the program and I started to lose weight, people would come up to me and say, what are you doing? And then of course I would launch into, I'm in this program and, and da, 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 da. Um, I'm, I started the program when I was 69. And uh, so I've been in it almost two years. Um, I was a little daunted by the commitment to groups. Didn't see myself as a group person. Uh, however, I have grown into um, into the groups in a way that, um, and I'm, and everyone I had, um, contact with from, from our wonderful Jess, the nutritionist to the doctor, uh, to the doctor in our group. Is it Dr. Spengal? I think I'm saying his name correctly. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah I and I loved, I loved that he was plant-based because I've been vegan for about 10 years. And I, I did come to appreciate, the the group um what i found really heartening was when um when i got materials um 
some of this, what I would call supplemental materials um, about how you change your habits. So Atomic Habits has become one of my when I'm on when I'm on the bike, um, biking away, it's become one of my listens. And I think you had there was something that came out that had talked about Byron Katie. Um, who would you be without your story? So although I did not see myself as a diabetic, I also did not see myself as a person who could um, take control of my health and and become more active. Really, the motivating there were two. Mo I think the official motivating reason I gave it gave in the in, in the question there was, um, I don't want to be dealing with um, the healthcare system because I think that um, my experience to date had been not good. Um, I remember. I should actually send this fellow a thank you note because in a way he, he motivated me. He wanted, I don't know. I think I was there for maybe a prescription renewal and he wanted me to get on the scales. And I said, no, because unless the medication is related somehow to my weight, I don't think you need to know. And it, it, it felt in that moment, like a shaming exercise, right. which I never felt in, in this program. It's a, a very compassionate, uh, program. Um, I would I would say that um, I think I've said it in other times we've spoken that people do have to have a, or it's helpful to have a certain level of abil of belief in the power of change. Yeah. So I believed that. I think the motivating. If I had to put one motivating factor on it, it was I was curious. Like mm -hmm. all these these things that that are part of the program, like the nutrition. Um, I was I was vegan. I was already intermittent fasting when I had actually tried a weight loss program. So I had intermittent fasting was already part of my program, um, and um, but movement and you know cardio movement and and weightlifting definitely was was not so um and i of course i'm still a work in in progress because there's still some things i'm not at goal weight um my um numbers are really good so i had uh, my last blood work was a couple of weeks ago and my a1c was 5.8 so it's steadily gone down some of the other things um, I need to talk to to um, uh, our nutritionist about next week because, in a way, um, I um, I have sort of compensated for low carb carbohydrates with um, with more fat, and so my triglycerides and some cholesterol readings definitely need some attention. And so I got on the internet and started doing some research. And guess what? The magic prescription for fats is exercise, right? <laughs> so uh, it's a fairly consistent uh, message that um, the program gives out. So uh, or uh, provides. I love the I love the level of materials that the depth of the knowledge that are in the modules um, in preparation to talk to you today. I went back and reviewed some of the modules. So, so please tell Jack, he can mark me as completed for some of the modules. It did rather freak me out to know that he would know um, whether I completed a module or not. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It, it occasionally does. Um, we, we, we use it from the standpoint to see, if, you know, kind of a level of engagement with the program and, and, uh, it's amazing how, how what a high percentage of people do the homework. Um, what amazes me though is sometimes I look and people have watched the video two or three times to 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 really kind of get it. I, I think the understanding that they need to get right, and it's um, it's very individual, right, in terms of what you're going to pull pull from this. And so, every, yeah, go ahead. Well, Susan, you know you're. Um, you know, your journey has been quite remarkable in terms of your personal progress. And then I think your spirit of creating a ripple, you know, and, and this is what I've been saying to patient people, I, I call them patients, uh, bad, bad habit as a doctor, but people who've gone through our program, uh, I think do create a ripple, you know, and, and it, you, you create the ripple kind of in your family and your friends around you and in the community in, in large. And I think it's important. Um, in fact, you know, it's, it's probably the way that most of our 
referring doctors really get to know us is not through anything we send them. They, they frankly don't believe any of that. I think what happens is, is, you know, people like yourself, you know, go back to family doctors or go back to other doctors in the system and you say, Hey, this is what I've done. And, and here's why it's working. But looking at your personal journey, what, what do you feel like the, the big, you know, what was the, the aha for you in terms of this? Cause you didn't really identify as a diabetic. You weren't really looking, you know, some, you had the spark, I think from the swimming pool kind of in Whistler that you, you wanted to get back into the pool. Um, what clicked for you when you, when you started doing it? Um, I think the biggest thing was just amazement that I could actually move, um, that I could, um, I could follow, get rid of the processed foods, um, that I could to some extent control cravings. It was just seeing the success in, in the numbers was like, I mean, it was, it was, a bonus in some ways, but it was also this works, this can work right. Uh, for me. Right. And um, was there one aha moment? Um, I've, I've formed this, there's a little cadre of uh, people at the pool. And now I, since about a year ago, I started doing weightlifting and um, uh, muscle building. I work with a trainer uh, once a month at the Y, he's fabulous. And that's another, maybe, you know, I tell him about the program and he asks me questions and he works with other people at the Y uh, and the Y here um, has a, a cardio, kind of a cardio focus. So they yeah. have a, a cardio program. Um, so I think the, the moment that the first time I got my results and I met with you, and you were quite enthusiastic, although I didn't understand <laughs> all the numbers, but you were enthusiastic about, well, this is really, I think I remember you telling me that that generally people sort of show us a downward trend, kind of a steady downward trend. But when I was really, when I really committed to the program in the beginning and was uh, was really watching what I ate, it was almost like almost like a 45 degree um, change in some of the numbers. So that was really uh, heartening. So I think the feedback was heartening. And the first time that I'm, because I swim, I go to an aquafit class, I'm out of the house by six in the morning and um the first time that I truly did not want to get out of bed, like there was this dialogue going on. And then I remembered that uh, I don't, I think I heard it in the program. So just, just try it and just do it. Even if you go to the pool or you go wherever you're going, uh, get out the door. And even if you don't do anything, you've taken a step towards um, reasserting, almost like reasserting your control over your own, life or that I can really change that. And I have done some research after listening to Atomic Habits 5 million times into some of the research around um, certain habits are always, always stay in your brain. Um, what happens is new habits come in and you can kind of say, okay, guys, time to get me out of bed and, and into the pool. And then just think, you know, how good you're going to fe feel. Um, I mean, the rewards to change are not always immediate, right? right? There are sometimes they come like this morning had, we had a bomb scare at where I worked yesterday. So I was out, my right. lunch was locked up, turned out <laughs> to be all fine, but my lunch was locked up. So I didn't really stay on, on program as well as I would hope. Um, however, the fact that I got up this morning and got to the pool shows me that something has really changed in my life. Yeah. And uh, so th those are, maybe it's not so much one moment as a series of small moments. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, um, you know, we, we, we talk about kind of better choices and then one way to make the choice easier is to try to shrink it. Right. So as you said, it's, it's, you know, the hard part's getting out of the bed in the morning and, you know, and so we, we give you, you know, give yourself permission that if you get out of bed and go to the swimming pool and still don't feel like swimming, then fine, take the day off. You're, you're probably too tired to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a, you know, that as a lifelong runner, I always, you know, go with the, well, if I don't feel like running after two blocks, I can 
walk home. Yeah. And I've never walked home, right? It's the hard yeah. part is getting out the door. So um, it's, it's, it's fun to kind of see people make those changes and, um, and realize that there, there isn't a perfect standard that you need to shoot for. It's just simply, you know, are there some better choices that you can do? And can you start doing some of them now? Mm -hmm. In this moment, I mean, some of the things I'm st I'm still working on, and I'm really looking forward to the follow up program because there are some things that that um, uh, like the exercise I talked about the fat my fat readings are a bit up cholesterol readings, um, and uh, having that movement after you eat, you know, yeah. kind of a progress having functional uh, fitness like climbing the stairs. And also, I was, I was just thinking about this this morning because I did have a bit of a, I don't think it was necessarily an injury, but when, you, when you're when you my age and you haven't worked out for 40 years, um, it's there's bound to be some alleys, right? So um, I got, I had bursitis in my hip and that's, that's why I saw a physiotherapist who is just awesome. Been so blessed to have people in my team yeah. Uh, although they wouldn't define themselves potentially um, to say, well, um, I mean, you can still move. I mean, even if you're, if you're hurting a bit and I was really proud of myself when I got back to the, back to the gym, back to the pool after I had this bursitis. And by the way, when I stood in 25 degree below temperature to get into the walk-in clinic, I thought maybe having a family doctor would be a good idea. And I ran into a doctor who knew about the program uh, and as he prescribed something for the bursitis. And so that was really good. Although he, he wasn't really, um, I did, of course, enlighten him. My <laughs> about some because he said oh yeah that's the program with exercise and love and i said i don't remember any modules on love but maybe he's talking about stress relief right yeah 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 <laughs> what people take take from it um but yeah it, you know it's it, it's it is amazing because um physicians really get to know the program from what you know the patients that they're seeing tell, tell them right and um, and, and, and we, we now have about, about a quarter of the doctors in, uh, primary care doctors in BC are regular refers to the program. So, so the word's getting out, um, which, which, is, which is great. Right. And, and, and we, we want it to be available for everybody. Uh, and the other part, fun part is those doctors, uh, some of them start to reach out to us and say, Hey, can, can I do this? It, it seems yeah. like fun to practice this way. Can can I do this? And, and, uh, and that's been a lot of fun because we've onboarded a, a lot of doctors to, to actually deliver the program. So it's kind Excellent. of, uh, the ripple ripples kind of go in all directions. Yes. Um, and I don't think I'll ever, uh, I mean, I don't think I'll ever stop talking about the benefits. I use every opportunity of someone even so, how are you? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm feeling great. Uh, most of the time and I sailed through, you know, sail through the bursitis, which only lasted really a couple of weeks. And um, it was pretty scary when it happened because it was a sudden onset inflammation and I couldn't yeah. walk. I was getting out of the pool uh -oh. <laughs> and I couldn't get out of the pool. So I had to slowly get into my car. And um, I, I, in the past, I, I think I would have been more deterred by any sort of perceived injury or something like that right? right um i would have been more more but i thought well and again it's just try it yeah it's just yeah. try it just try going back mm. yeah it, it's it's it, it's interesting because the the mindset is very pervasive right this better mindset where it's like okay i don't have to be perfect what can, you know so i'm injured what can i do mm -hmm. and um and then it becomes gentle as well because you know, if it really hurts too much. You 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 don't need to do it, right? You have a choice. Yes. Um, but there's usually a, there's usually a compromise between nothing and and a, and That's everything, full right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Full tilt. Um, and it is something that you know I find when I talk to the practitioners who deliver the program. Uh, one of the reasons we love doing this is we're in the same boat as everyone else, right? Like it, it's not like you know it's not like we have it all figured out because we're we're kind of getting up in the morning and it's like okay well, we're gonna get our exercise in today. When are we gonna do it? And 
you know, food choices and managing stress and you know, getting enough sleep and, you know, kind of relationships and purpose and, and all of that. Um, and, and that's what I think is fun because, you know, if you think about lifestyle, it's, it's, it's not like a diet. You don't just kind of do it and finish it. It's like, you got to keep doing it. Right. I suspect that some of my approaches to my um, obstacles would not necessarily be supported by research. So <laughs> I, uh, for, I, I, um, I mean, a lot of them eating um, issues are emotional. So, uh, However, I think the program has made me more curious uh, or at least made me more aware about um, what are the what are the surrounding circumstances like so every day at four o'clock, if you're craving something, um, yeah. what's what's going on in the back room? Yeah. Right. Is yeah. this a really is this a physical, you know, it's the end of the day and uh, because I'm vegan, there's some challenges, uh, which, you know, I work through with the nutritionists and and I can't I really hope that I'll be able to do. I, I finally accept it, that it's not just there's no destination. It's yeah. just a journey. Like everything that happens along the way is uh, is it, it really does feel like a bonus to be better. So no matter what happens in my future kind of healthcare, um, I know that I've taken some steps to be more aware um, and, uh, and, and kind of rely. So I guess what I'm saying, Dr. Burton, is for me, it's a combination of the great scientific um, research-based information that the program provides and also the, the kind of, um, attitude maybe what you called the better mindset but i would call almost like to me it's just been a um a, a real spiritual journey as well it's made me more humble um in terms of accepting you know the, what i hear in the group and things like that the struggles that we all have yeah. of uh, can i eat this or you know um and so i was, was going to tell you about my my cheesy thing so four o'clock every day i'm driving by no matter where the, i have all the cheesy spots outlined right so i decided instead of talking myself out of this craving that i would sort of make friends with it and i don't even remember the last time i had a craving for that because i just said okay here's the bag of cheesies let's be friends and uh, don't torture me um, yeah. just be friends and then pretty soon it it um, it it turned around um, I'm still working on I'm still working on the nutrition part I'm still I want to increase my um, my 150 minutes to 200 minutes or 250. Um, I like the fact that numbers are not really so emphasized in terms of weight. Um, I think that there's other um, tangible or other benefits that are, you know, do you, do you feel better walking upstairs? Um, do you, are you able to, I'm still working on the sleep thing. Um, the, yeah. So I'm and still working on the movement right after you eat. That's still a challenge. So we'll see how it goes in the next, our next after care program. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, well, um, will you be involved in that or is that, yeah, so, so so far I've I've got all the groups. Although uh, Dr. Spangal is getting started, and Dr. Kuhn's getting started, uh, and Dr. A is getting started. So we've got we've got a bunch bunch of other docs getting getting ready to go, um, and then we've got to get it launched in Alberta and Ontario. So we've got a little bit of work to do to get the ongoing program kind of fully fully up to speed. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think the the um, the mindset or the it's the psychology. I think is um you know a, a lot of times we we spend a lot of time up front in the program obviously explaining physiology right yes. and and um and we we feel really it's really important to try and do our best to explain what's a pretty complicated topic mm -hmm. um but the more you understand the why i think it's easier to start to learn what to do right and and it um but the how to do it ends up being all about psychology and, it, and it's a it's a lifelong uh, journey with yourself because, um, you know, we, <laughs> we, 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 human nature is, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's, 
it's remarkable in many respects. It's 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 not easy to stay on the path, and and um, and I think what like you, what you said about learning that it's the des yeah you know, the the destination isn't really what the journey is about. It's it really is the process, um, and as long as you're headed the right direction, yeah, you know, which which you get from the feedback, right? So you know your blood work with your A one C coming down so dramatically, that gives you feedback. You're headed in the right direction. Mm-hmm. You know the 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 weight change gives you feedback um but just just how you feel gives you that feedback and, and as and, long as you and i was gonna say and, we're, and yeah. down two dress sizes wearing clothes i haven't worn in in 20 yeah. in 20 years and the other thing uh, not not to interrupt which i have a bad habit of doing but um it's who you also meet along the journey not just right. the people in the group but my uh, my guru buys at the um at the gym because there's a whole whole bunch of retired people there at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And they're, they're so encouraging. Like when they see you showing up, although I got to tell you, I was at the gym the other day and my um, physio has me doing core exercises. So I was, uh, I was laying on the floor and uh, I was trying to really concentrate on those deep muscle movements, right. To really feel them. And some fellow came over and said, are you okay? <laughs> I'm just having, and I see these guys, these weightlifters in the gym, like they pause between yeah. sets and yeah. try to figure out where they're at. But I maybe he thought, I don't know. I said, Well, thank you. I said, Are you? And I said, Thank you. I'm just doing some focusing. And uh, I mean, I, I really, I wasn't ready for this program 20 years ago, but I wish it had been available. And, yeah. um, and it really, the, the physiology means more to me after the experience, like what I'm going back and reviewing modules. Right. And so I, I remember a moment in group where I, I asked Dr. Spengal, I said, so when we're slipping over into fat burning at night, you know that you've made this, uh, how do you know that you've made the switch? And then I answer my own question by saying that I and I that I'm not hungry. Is it when I feel that I'm not hungry? And he mm-hmm. said yes. And so it it is the physiology is important. I think it is important to start out with it and come back to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and I think that you know one of the things that um, I I love about the group and I love that you're skeptical about the group because. Um, I'm not a group person, right? Like, uh, you know, and, um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, um, the research is very clear groups, groups work way better than, than doing everything individually. And I didn't understand it for the longest time. And then I finally kind of dawned on me and it was a few people I talked to had gone through it, but it was, it's this kind of contradictory kind of you know, statements of, realizing you're not alone because you kind of look at the screen and it's like, wow, there's a whole bunch of other people who are struggling with exactly the same set of things I'm struggling with. And then you look around and you see, but everybody's different, right? You know, there's different genders, there's different ethnicities, there's different ages, there's different diagnoses, different, you know, different life histories, right? And you realize, okay, not alone, but I got to find my own path here. And, um, and I think that that to, to to me that's the magic of the group, right? If you you kind of realize that there's, I, I you know I think a lot of people in programs are looking for you know what's the you know the the six steps you know or the twelve right. steps or the seven steps or you know I just need to know them and and then I'm good and it, and it's you know it's like well everybody's path is different and somebody yeah. in one of the groups a couple of weeks ago said you know. I guess we're kind of like puzzles, aren't we? And I said, yeah, exactly, right? And and sometimes the puzzle piece is hard to find, right? That next piece, right? It, it is. It's very, when I said it was humbling, um, that's sort of what, what struck me in the group is that how we, you know, we all have our challenges and some things we're really firm on. I remember, right. I think, saying to you, like, I don't know why people come to group if they're not prepared to drink black coffee or something like that. And over the time, I've changed that. Like, for me, it's 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 some something else that's my, my struggle. It, it may be specific to the individual, but it is our own, uh, it is our own challenge um the atomic habits book uh, 
led me to do some more listening to some uh, experiments and things like that. And this idea of group um, also, it, it succeeds because then there are people in it who have made huge changes. Although I do feel a little reluctant sometimes to what feels a bit like bragging or... Yeah you know, putting myself forward, but groups succeed like AA succeeds because people see other people who are um, working on their addictions. You know? you know, it's interesting because we, we, we open every session with wins, right? And we, we ask people to share their wins yeah. and, uh, and, and people are reluctant for exactly the same, what you just said, it's like, I feel like I'm bragging. And, and what we're trying to do is not kind of, brag about it and, and kind of have um because we don't really care whether the win is just that i feel better or that i've lost 10 pounds we, they're 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 equal to us from a win standpoint but it is noticing the good things and articulating them and connecting them to your identity right because I, I think one of the things I, I heard you kind of say you know at, at in the beginning was really that like you, you very much identify with this now and and it's yeah. something that you know it's part of you um because on the negative side, our human nature is such that when we when we slip and when we fail, we do we identify with it, right? We we say I'm somebody who can't do this, right? I can, you know I'll never do this, right? And and we take it like it's all about us. Um, so part of it's just changing that script, and so that's kind of where where I do encourage people to to, to actually articulate it and say it out loud and 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 be proud of it. Um, obviously, you know, trying to be sensitive to, 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 to others, but, um, but recognizing that, that, you know, for some people, and you see it in the groups, for some people, the weight loss is very easy, right? And it comes off quickly. And for other people, it's very, very hard, mm -hmm. right? And there's differences, right? And, and the differences in physiology don't, you know, it's not, you know, it, they're, 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 they're not really about you, right? What the you is, is the person who's making the better choices. And, mm -hmm. and so, so that's the, kind of the psychology of trying to get people to, to articulate and, and just say, you know, identify with, with those positive things. Um, I especially love like when, you know, kind of the, the win, like your win this morning, you know, you mm -hmm. got yourself to the pool, right? Like that's huge, right? Like you, you, you do that every morning and like, you know, it's a, it's a different life than if you don't do it every morning. Right. Yes, I was forced during our bomb evacuation because the restaurant I was in only had uh, vegan cake. So yeah. I had to wait out the evacuation eating cake, which is not exactly, um, it was certainly after my intermittent fast, but wasn't quite on the program. No, right. No. But my uh, my lunch was locked in my office. So I came back and they had a dog apparently. So I asked one of the sheriffs if uh, the dog ate my lunch and nobody was really laughing at that point about this because it is fairly serious and everybody did a great job, but I, you know, I, I was forced to eat cake. So that's my <laughs> story and I'm sticking to it. I love the fact that um, people in the group are really patient with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I've been in groups before um, where the structure is, I'm going to tell you what, like people in the group tell each other what to do. And mm -hmm. so sharing wins. I also like how gently when somebody says something that's not quite accurate, that, um, that, that um, the uh, nutritionist or the doctor comes in and says, well, uh, this, this is kind of how we look at it. You know, it's all very gentle correction or gentle information. And I'm, um, I'm really, uh, I, you know, you've uh, the group, the, especially the physicians and, and, uh, and one the wonderful Jess have been a real model for me in my own work with clients, because I deal with people who are very, my work involves people who are highly emotional and mm -hmm. really sometimes a little tunneled vision about what constitutes um, moving forward. It's not successes. It's not like a number, but it's like um, it, it's just moving forward. And, and I feel that we, that mostly we move forward. Plus we share tips about where to buy the best, get deals on yeah. CGMs and things like that. Yeah. Yes. I, I wondered to kind of just finish if, um, if uh, you could just share, um, you know, kind of, kind of your advice to somebody that's so somebody's at the pool and yes. what, what's, what's your advice to get, get started, get motivated? How do you, how, how uh, would you phrase it? 
Um, well, I think you have a really great process for, I, I mean, I'm assuming the process is still the same. You call Jack or the <laughs> Jack's equivalent and uh, say, I'm interested in what do I need to do? And then uh, follow, um, then information will come out. And um, yeah, just start, just start where you're at. Like, mm -hmm. don't, don't kind of say, well, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be in remission or however, is that how, is that, I think that's how it's described in the program. Yeah. Um, um, or I'm going to be at goal weight. Just say, just try it out. Be curious, be curious and be open. And, uh, and it's free. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I love All it. Right. I don't know how you managed to do it. Um, and I'm hoping that, uh, um, I don't know that I've actually, I'd like to think that, um, there's a lady at the pool. I, I, I told her I'd send her the link for this recording. And although she never did join lifestyle, I think that, um, she's made huge gains, um, just from, and there's a couple of, yeah, I, I'd like to think that, that even if people don't join now, it's like, um, Johnny Appleseed, like it's something you, oh, there is, there is a, a program or there is, you can change, you can make a difference right. in your health, right? Right. Yeah. I think, I think you, you know, you can, you can be the ripple, right? And and I think mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're creating a ripple, at, uh, you know, and it, it's not just about, you know, it's not about the program. It's about people taking control of their own health, right? Right. right. Susan, thank you so much for, for joining us on the podcast. Uh, thank and you for, uh, thank you for having me. Thanks so much for listening to The Path, the podcast from Lifestyle Rx. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, if you know anyone that would benefit from this podcast, please send them the link. We appreciate you sharing the message around. And if you uh, know anyone that uh, or if you are interested in joining the Lifestyle Rx program, it's provincially covered in BC, Alberta, and Ontario. And you can find out more and sign up at lifestylerx.com. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.